Hi, I'm Phil Winnie. I'm a professor and Canada Research Chair at Simon Fraser University, where I'm interested to research how students study and the ways in which we can track that information and feed it back to them so they can become better at regulating their own learning. Uh, Phil, thanks for taking the time to chat. Uh, your work is something that uh, I've certainly been impressed by. It goes on uh, far longer than the field of learning analytics as a particular domain. So I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what is the nature of your research around learning analytics and the evaluation of data in the educational process? Okay, well, what I'm particularly interested in is how learners go about what they do when they study and which information they choose when they're studying. So what we're trying to do with learning analytics is characterize that process for a particular learner and to use big data as a way of trying to identify groups of learners that are really homogenous with respect to a large number of the features that characterize their studying. The idea is that uh, randomized controlled trials of a sort wash away all those individual differences that really matter. That's great. That's so uh, can you talk a little more about that point? The, the how, in what way do randomized controlled trials wash away those differences that matter? Okay, so when you compute an average, what you're doing is ignoring all of the variance in the original data. So what I'm interested to do is not treat that statistical construction of an average as the basis for making recommendations to learners, but rather think about what characterizes all of the particular features of their studying activities finding ways that that actually uh, maps onto a collection of other people, and then giving some nudges to a particular learner so that they might try in a small way to carry out a program of personal research. The mean becomes something that's irrelevant to the now. What they're particularly interested in is how are they going to deal with this bit of information at this point. And what about technology? So how are you, what, what kind of an environment are you using to be able to capture some of these differences or what is the playground that you use in terms of your data, tools, technologies? Well, we've developed a piece of software called NStudy, lowercase n, capital S, study. The idea is it's a kind of super annotation tool set for learning online. You can make highlights, you can cr create notes, you can develop folders, you can have chats, you can uh, create concept maps, you can write essays. And the way that this uh, contributes to learning analytics is it generates a huge amount of very detailed, time-stamped data about how learners work with information and which particular bits of information they work with. For example, we capture the text that they highlight or the text they use when they title a folder, the text they use with a note, the text they contribute to chats with whom they're chatting, so all of that information constructs a very, very detailed picture about what a learner's doing and how they're doing it. That information becomes the material that we can put together in a big data format to try to mine, to identify a peer group that's really homogenous with respect to me, so that I can learn from a peer group that's very much like me, rather than one that's distributed all across the scale in a normal distribution. So that leads me to a question with, uh, I think it's sometimes leveled at learning analytics or really any kind of analytics that happens uh, as we browse online in different areas is at what stage do you begin to create too much of a homogenous group and setting? Do we kill the serendipity if we don't, you know, what, what happens with the diversity? Is there a way that you could use those kinds of approaches to actually increase the diversity? Well, absolutely. The one, the one thing to know about NStudy is that it's a completely open environment for the learner. They get to decide what to highlight, they get to decide when to make a note, when to open a new bookmark, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of their individuality and uh, serendipity is expressed in what they do. But what's also possible is that in a group we may discover that there are some forms of serendipity I haven't thought of that could be introduced to me as another option that I might consider. So not only am I free to operate as I wish as a learner, but I can learn from my peers in ways that might suggest something new to me. All right, so let's uh, say I'm a high school teacher, college instructor. What can I do or what should I do differently in my teaching practices based on the research that you're now conducting? Well, one of the things that we hope to do is to be able to provide for teachers or instructors close to real time information about their learners. For example, in, a current, in the kind of current content management systems, 
you get information about page views. In our system, you get information about what learners are paying attention to by their highlights. So for example, we might show the teacher a heat map of the text that's just been assigned to learners or about co uh, common topics that they're discussing in their chats that might be going on during lecture or as segments of a lecture. And in that way, we can let the teacher know more precisely what information the stu students are looking at and what they're not looking at. That might give the instructor some idea about whether to probe some of the information that's not being looked at or what are fair questions. Great. Thanks very much, Phil. Excellent overview.